I think very few cars can claim that purity of design, that level of, of simplicity. Um, cars that are this evocative, like the Porsche 911, the Willys Jeep, or the Ford Mustang. I mean, very few cars are that easily identifiable. Series Land Rovers were built between 1948 and 1985, and they changed very little because um, the design was just sort of optimized. It was just kind of pure, and it was what it was. I'm Bassam Wasif. I'm an automotive journalist, and I drive a 1963 Land Rover Series 2A. I guess when you're playing with matchbox toys when you're a kid, there's something that appeals about the shape of a Series 2. It's just so simple, it's a little block. It's, you look overhead and it's square. And in my head I keep going back to the purity of the function of the car. But the thing about the Series 2A is that it is really just the origin of the utility vehicle. It's so simple. Series Land Rovers were conceived after the war and there was a surplus of aluminum which really worked to its benefit, uh, helped it have lightweight construction and avoided a lot of the rust issues that could have happened with a vehicle like this exposed to the elements. A Bugatti designer once told me there should never be any completely straight lines in a car design and um, that always cracked me up because the tail of this car is a straight line and I think that's one of the great features of it because it's just this that's all there is um, but I love it and it's punctuated by these little bulbous uh, tail lights I think uh, personifying inanimate objects is almost inevitable um, that anthropomorphic feeling of relating a machine to a human being and you look at the face of a Series 2A and it's got those closely inset big eyes that are so expressive. And um, there's just something weirdly relatable about this car. There is almost nothing you can't do to this car yourself with a simple set of tools. It's part of the character of the car. And if you lose the battery, you can even hand crank the engine, which is, um, you can't say that about a lot of cars. Acquiring a classic car is oftentimes sort of fitting together a puzzle piece of facts and information and anecdotes. The registration says 1966. It's actually in 1963 from everything I can gather. I love the limestone color, but I also uh, think it'd be so cool to show off the aluminum skin that's underneath. So maybe someday I'll just strip off that paint and polish it and just have it be bare aluminum. Because I drive new cars for a living, it takes a bit of mental adjustment sometimes to jump out of a perfect shiny new car and into this 54-year-old machine. Of course, it's terribly slow. I mean, maybe 55 miles an hour downhill in a hurricane. Um, it's just not a powerful car, but when you're driving it along and the wind is blowing and it's making so much noise and vibration, <laughs> it feels like it's going to shake itself loose. It feels way faster than it actually is and it's kind of an adventure to drive. Of course, the place this car really belongs is off-road. And that's sort of the uncompromising part of this car's personality as well. And that's what I'm really glad that Land Rover carries through into its modern cars. Um, they still give them off-road capability, but this is almost purely off-road. It's a two and a quarter liter petrol engine. It puts out 77 horsepower and 124 pound-feet of torque, which is actually uh, significant considering the horsepower number is so relatively low. You're sort of working around all of these rough edges when you're driving the car. It requires mindfulness and it requires sort of an aware driving style that allows no room for distraction. You know, you got drum brakes all around, you don't have a lot of stopping power. Steering ratio is really slow, so there's a lot of work you have to do to get the wheel turned around. Um, center of gravity is a little high. Non-synchro mesh gearbox, so you're always double declutching and you're doing all these things to keep it running smoothly. But that's the beauty of it, you're thinking about it, you're not zoning out.
you don't have a lot of power, but once you build up speed, you gotta be careful about scrubbing it off. It's just this very crude machine. It's deconstructed, it's the essence of something. It's stripped away of all pretense. It's all noise, vibration, harshness, all the things that engineers usually try to weed out, but that gives it an element of mechanical honesty. And that's what I really respond to with this vehicle. You know, it's been said that something like two thirds of the world's population, the first mechanical object that they saw uh, was a Land Rover. And uh, that to me kind of embodies the spirit of these vehicles. Um, just pure adventure, seeing things that nobody else has seen for the first time and going places with this kind of go anywhere attitude. That spirit of just go anywhere, do anything, the world is yours, I love that. The way this old truck came into my life and the amount of effort it took and the amount of patience um, almost made me feel like I earned it. And at the end of the day, it's like getting to that point and keeping it uh, has been a relationship almost akin to making it a part of the family. And that's something I hope never goes away. <laughs>